There we go. I think that's working. And why is the second camera not working? There we go. Again, Streamlabs, you are a weird product. All right. Let's go on to the second one. Yeah, that's... Maybe if we bend this a little bit further? Is that, is that the problem we're having? It definitely doesn't fit in that one. Maybe I should have put more uh, play in these holes. Used a bigger bit, possibly. Suppose I might turn this uh, off cut into a reamer. That might help some. Let's see, how's that, how's that even work? And you get the triangle file in here. Yeah. No, let's just uh, let's keep at this. Maybe try another one. X-Ray Specialist Punk. I did not see your comment back then. Sorry about that. Um, and to answer your question, I know you're not viewing anymore, but no, not a stainless steel welding rod. Just a um, bit of steel that uh, they sell at Home Depot. Here, my little sawing jig. Yep, 
Yeah, uh, wife has a lot of spices, so we have to make room for them. It's got about a hundred bottles, about uh, about like this. Uh, this is this is one of one of five different varieties of paprika. See this one? This one is is not even not even gonna work. Man, but I I don't have a good way of measuring these, so I'm not really sure. Uh, not really sure what to do because I think this one's pretty much just um, that's lost. Yeah, let's try another. I, this 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 may end up uh, getting cut short because I don't have enough materials. And this one came pre-bent, so let's see if we can. No, not that made it worse. Trying to straighten out wire, not what I had uh, planned as entertainment for today. <laughs> Alright, let's try another one. Hopefully we won't bend this one too short. Yeah, uh, spices are very, very important. I, I, I will admit to that. Ever, uh, ever since I quit smoking, I've discovered that flavor actually matters. Let's uh, bring the camera a little bit closer. And this is exactly what I did the last time, so I'm not sure why I think it'll work this time. Okay, so that's what's going to go. So if we bend it about there, that, that, that ought to work. But you know, if it, if it ought to work, it, it ought to work, ought to have worked last time, but it didn't. See, we're still too short. Man. Man, oh man, oh man. Let's see if it fits on any of the others. on the end. I know I just had a hacksaw. There it is. It's behind me. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's not what I wanted to do. This one. Cooperate with me this time. And see that one fits perfect. Man, I just I just don't know. Don't know. All right, let's try you. One more time, and we'll make you extra extra long. So that way there are no complaints. This one's going to be a little bit twisted, it feels like. But at least that looks to be about the right size. Hacksaw's been getting quite the work out of late. So later today, I've actually got a video that I'm dropping on how to make this uh, dovetail template. So finished that and edited it up uh, last night. And then this morning checked it out and saw that there was room for improvement, so did some more editing. And I've got that scheduled for uh, 2 o'clock, so about an hour after I'm done with this stream. That looks nice. We'll keep you. You can be friends. Uh, but I am going to need, it looks like uh, I'm going to need to run down to the home despot again and pick up another one of these wires because... I'm going to be one short. I do not like to say it, but that's, that's how it goes. Now you're always supposed to grab extra material, but that's money and we don't waste money around here. At least we try to avoid it. may not even need to glue these in place. So they fit pretty tight like that. I'm glad I didn't get uh, any thicker of wire because these are, are difficult enough to bend.
I'm sure this is not the greatest of views, but it's what I got for now. Try not to move this camera around too much. Camera, who am I kidding? It's a cell phone. Which is why when anybody ever calls me, the video feed goes out. So X-Ray, I, I hope you can tell me if the uh, if the video is, is all right and if the audio is working. So I can't tell without any feedback. We need to file this. Is that what we're complaining about? Well, thank you. Do appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't have one of those uh, in my shop yet. Though I, I have been uh, considering different things to do. Like uh, maybe, you know, uh, I think I've got like a 19 inch monitor I could set up in here, but um, there's there's some limitations with that as well. Because how do I actually, you know, get that to where I can see something useful? What I'd really like to do is be able to see the chat on something bigger. Because right now I've just got a... Well, I've got a tablet over there that's got the chat. And, yeah. Everything in this shop, all my, all my technology is Android devices. So I've got uh, this phone up here. Up uh, there, that's my old phone, <laughs> and that's that's my tablet. So yeah, everything's a Android device because I can't risk my computer with all this dust. So I got a nice computer. Yeah, MSI gaming laptop, and that's got to last me a long time. Now eventually I'd like to get some, um, you know, some proper webcams, some, some high def webcams up in here. And maybe a dedicated computer just for in, in here for streaming with OBS. But again, that's, that's money. And my income right now is an army pension. So... I'm doing all right, but we can't be frivolous. Yeah, I, I have thought about doing uh, some, like a dustproof enclosure. Um, what concerns me about that is heat buildup. And I've got an old desktop that had served me quite well, but the power supply blew up and the video card blew up at some point during my move. Oh, were, were you asking for like 
excessive bonuses or student loan debt or something like that? Or were your teeth all messed up? <laughs> Seen that one before. Yeah, I just did, uh, just did 20, got out in January. Well, uh, yeah, you, you, you unfor unfortunately, you got to be pretty fit to be in the service. I mean, they say two thirds of the population doesn't even meet the qualifications. So it's, uh, no shame in it. That's for sure. General in the Air Force. I can forgive that. <laughs> and there's 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 always a uh, rivalry between the services, but uh, it's it's sibling rivalry, nothing but love. Kind of like the old saying, yeah, nobody's allowed to beat up on my younger brother but me. Which I wouldn't actually know because I'm the youngest of my family. That one's going to be a bit of a pickle. See if we can't move it to another one. Do you fit better in here? A little bit. We can be friends still. No, no, that's 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 too much wiggle. Yeah, both, both of my grandfathers were uh, Navy at one point. They, they didn't make a career out of it or anything like that. Just uh, short tours. Uh, on my mother's side, my grandfather was um, left the service, took advantage of the educational benefits, and uh, became an engineer. And he... Uh, he worked on some pretty fancy stuff that... Uh, he wasn't even allowed to tell me about, so. Now this one's way, way too long. How did that happen? That fits perfectly there. Now this one's too long for anything. Yeah, my paternal grandfather, I, I don't think he spent much time, I think it was just during the war. Didn't talk about it that much, but then again, didn't really talk to him all that much. And that might be okay. So I rebent this one. I'm gonna have to cut it down again. Because now it's just a little bit longer than it was. Yeah, I, I've been thinking about Discord. I really haven't uh, figured out a good way of doing it with, on my phone, though. And are you talking about uh, Ready, Set, Stream? I, I, I've signed up with them and I've, I've been on the on, on their discord but um, 
haven't really figured out much to do with it, so. But well, it does look promising. Well, if I have everything I need, uh, tell all your friends and maybe they can come join us. <laughs> I only need, what, uh, 40 more followers <laughs> in order to get affiliate? Or I could just break down and start playing Fortnite. I think that's uh, that's how everybody else gets popular, right? That's that's a pretty tight fit. See if we can't, uh, it's a little bit twisted. So these these guys aren't exactly parallel at the ends, so maybe if I twist it a little bit. Ooh, got a bit of a bend. Okay, so just just add it to the community like I do with the woodworking. I do, I do feel like that's kind of cheating just because, you know, I'm not really, I don't think I'm contributing anything to it, so. Maybe that's just me. All right. That one's going to be good enough, I think. And... I'm going to need to make a uh, run to the Home Depot. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, got, a, I got a decent collection of planes. Um, I don't have a number eight. I don't have anything below three. And I'm, I'm not doing halves yet, so I got a, a two fours, a five, a six, and a seven. And the, uh, the 62 is, is a nice one as well. And uh, there's, there's the full array if we can see those. Uh, this one's one of my more, more fortunate finds. That's the number 45. Got that off of Craigslist. For, uh, no, 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 don't, don't. Sorry. We still there? Okay. Accidentally hit the power button. Yeah, I got the 45 off of Craigslist um, for about uh, under 50 bucks. And it was absolutely complete. Had all the cutters in it. 753 and a 1. Okay, is that, uh, is that a, a Stanley number 1? Or is, is that like a vintage number 1? Or is it uh, like one of the Woodcrafts? Because those are, uh, the, the originals are, are not very easy to come by. From what I hear, anyway. 
or it might be the number twos that are really, really rare. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, the, uh, this one uh, was my grandfather's. A uh, little number four with an unknown brand made in the USA, that's all I know. Not the, not the nicest plane out there. Um, I don't like the, uh, the lateral adjustment, but you know. It's uh, it's nice. It's clean now, and it it makes shavings. So we use it. Uh, let me double check the fit. I think I can make that work. Yeah, I, I haven't uh, inherited much. Um, my mom let me go through uh, granddad's tools at one point and take everything I wanted. So I got a brace, a bunch of bits. Um, that plane and a couple of distance saws, which were really nice additions. Got a, a, a nice rip saw and a crosscut saw. And actually, I think the crosscut might have been my dad's. Is that that one's a bit newer? But the the, the rip saw is uh, from about the 1920s. But that number four was the only plane he had. And that did require a lot of bit of uh, cleaning and, and uh, put a fresh coat of paint on it as well. But yeah, Grandpa was more of a um, a mechanic and an engineer. I mean, the guy designed aircraft. So I don't think he was uh, had much of a woodworking hobby. All right, that's about as far as I can go with the materials I have. I'm just triple tech, yeah, that's that's not working. Dang it! All right, so um, I think what I'm gonna do just. Let's go ahead and glue these in. X-ray, okay. Uh, medically or in uh, some other capacity? Not that I know of any other fields that uh, use x-ray, but I'm sure it, there might be some. Okay, I, I don't know what NDI stands for. Non-destructive testing. Okay. So is that for like uh, different materials, different uh, say projects? 
someone builds like some kind of machine or mechanism and, and you test it with x-rays, make sure everything's going right. Glue's not quite cooperating with me today. Pipeline weld inspection. Okay, good stuff there. This is probably going to be a little bit tricky getting all these things fitted in here. So I have to make sure that the uh, the back of these shelves lines up with the rabbit I've got for the backing of the project. And I really shouldn't need all of these clamps, but. Um, some of these shelves might be a little bit short, unfortunately. I think I might have measured those wrong. So, I'm gonna need to kinda force the, the sides of the carcass together. Okay, so you install and repair the equipment, which is much more lucrative than um, operating and maintaining. That's one trick I learned in the Army. You never want to be the operator maintainer. They don't do anything fun. Okay, that's A. Those are A. I was hoping at one point to be doing some uh, kind of electronic repair in the Army, but that never worked out as I wanted it to. So, spent the first six years as a grunt, and the last 14 as a career counselor. closest I ever got was uh, I was detail assigned to what we called the commo shop and got to mess with intercom systems and radios. That was a good time. Well, that's, uh, that, that means you got a skill, I suppose. When you, 
when you're the only one who can fix it, people will pay a premium to, to get you out there. I'm not a hand. Um, no, this was this was a professional radio. Military networks. So, uh, military technology, if you're not familiar, is completely irrelevant to anything you'll see in the civilian world. The um, even the frequencies we use uh, are are not available to the uh, to the general public. Like most commonly, we uh, we were on FM bands, and the bandwidth that we had reserved was just um, underneath the FM radio you'd hear on your on your home stereo in your car. And you know, they've, they've got laws and stuff to prohibit anybody else from transmitting on those frequencies. But uh, other than that, really, really interesting capabilities that we have. Um, frequency hopping. That was a really fun part of it. And the, and the encryption, of course. So a lot of, a lot of different measures to prevent uh, the enemy from listening in on our conversations and from, from jamming our signals. Of course, by the time we got to use this stuff, it was already obsolete. Yeah, they, uh, you know, the, the, the encryption works. It certainly does. But as, uh, as, as far as the, the aircraft go, I don't think they, they generally don't work on FM. And that's, that's primarily what I was using. I'm going to have to take your word for that, unless you're joking with me. Of course, the only thing I really know about Hedy Lamar was the uh, reference in Blazing Saddles. And by the time that came out, I was still so young that I didn't even get it, get the reference. Come on, what's going on here?
towels around here. I got glue all over my fingers. There we go. Probably shouldn't worry too much about getting these uh, bars in right now because I still need to stain this. You go right ahead. I'm, 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 I'm used to lurkers. It's actually fairly uncommon for people to talk to me, but I do appreciate you all the same. Uh oh, can't even see what's going on, can we? I'm putting in a clamp. Not that exciting. Don't particularly care for these clamps, but they were on sale, which is why I have so many of them. That's a lot heavier with clamps. And I don't want to put it on there because there's still wet glue. I think that's about as far as I can go on the spice rack today. What time is it? I still got another 45 minutes or so. Let's see what else we can figure out in the shop. Um, now I've got on my bench here this little tool holder that's keeping currently all my tools. And the reason I have that is just because well, the reason I have all my tools there is because I just moved into the shop and it's, it's uh, not quite set up like I would like it to. So let's try and find something else we can make a tool holder for. And I think a good candidate for that would be my marking gauges. I've got a few of these. And there's one more hanging out here somewhere. There we go. And you know what? Let's put the calipers on there too. There we go. All right. Let's see what we can find in our scraps that would accommodate such a thing. This might do. So it doesn't need to be quite that long. 
Um, but first, I think what I'm going to do is actually make the slots for it. It's probably the best idea. And this is my uh, brace bits. And they're just kind of tossed in there. I haven't uh, any figure out an organization with these as well. Try and find one of appropriate size, or at least close to. Oh, those are a little short. This one's... That's about right, but a little bit bigger. How about you? Do you want to be friends? No, too small. Too small, too small. Too big, too big, too big, way too small. Ah, it's my other countersink. The uh, the woodworking shop that I used to go to all the time, right before I left Arizona, I basically went in and, and completely raided him for every um, every brace that he had. I don't think I'm going to have anything just the right size. So this is a little bit rusty, but it will do the trick. So yeah, I, I uh, Went through his entire selection, and if it had a proper snail, if it wasn't bent, and if it had two spurs, I bought it. So I left him with all the uh, the rejects, unfortunately. But you know what? He had them. He was willing to sell them, so I bought them. Start about Darish. Yeah, but at some point I'm going to need to find a good way to store these and get them sharpened up. not cooperating. Need the snail to poke through. And there we go. shop furniture so we don't need to be worried about it being pretty. Perfect. Actually, you know what? Let's um let's bevel the inway there. 
Get a three quarter inch chisel. I got one of those somewhere. And I them out. Nothing too fancy. This one and one for the mortise gauge. Let's get some proper depth here. Mostly square on. Alright. And then we got a uh, half inch maybe. No, that's three quarter. Just a half inch. There we go. And we're just gonna break this off a little bit. This is more or less to help us see where the grain's going at first and to make sure we don't go over our line. At least not too far. Okay. And now bevel down. We're getting some pretty straight cuts. I'm happy with that. this side right. it's not the prettiest way of doing things but it's quick and it's and it works see there we go that one and just want to get the spacing right so it'll be about here wider than absolutely necessary. Three quarter? Three quarters, just about perfect.
Lovely. Really do enjoy these uh, quick projects a lot. Um, actually, sometimes more than the the big involved projects, just because I can go I can go fast. I don't need to worry too much about accuracy. And you know, I, I see the results right away. Also gives me a chance to use a lot of different tools, a lot of different skills in a short period of time. It's not as repetitive as the big projects can be. This does not belong here, it belongs here. Okay. What do I need? I need a chisel. Not that one. I'm always grabbing the wrong chisel. All right, and now I think I could just uh, right about there. Remove what I don't need. Save that for later. You know what? Let's do this somewhat proper. Just a little bit. Pretend like we care, right? There we go. Let's get the fuzzy bits off here. Prevent splinters a little bit. Wouldn't be a bad idea to chamfer the inlets either. Now to figure out how to actually mount this.
Got some quarter inch plywood and that's worked well so far. But I don't think that's gonna actually, I think this would flex a little bit too much. So, if we were to Okay, I'll cut a couple strips of this, maybe about six, eight inches long. Hmm. What are these? Those are eight. So eight inches seems like a good way to go. Do I have eight inches? Okay. Well, I, I really need to get a measuring tape out here or something. I had one. Measuring tape, where are you? It's right in front of me. Okay. We've got 17 inches. So that means I can take there. pretty as it should have been for the amount of work I did, but we'll be okay. Let's cut off this little tail. I should have two more or less equal length pieces. So, need to get that into there. How do I want to accomplish this task? How much time do I got? I got half an hour, okay. Let's get stupid. Get out the 45. Smaller iron in there. Where are my cutters?
you about the right size? Oh, you are perfect, my friend. All right, let's get this guy sharpened up. I don't need this one the moment. So I've never used this blade before. You guys want to come along too? You can come. That's fine. We're all friends here. Obviously, I didn't clean this well enough because there's a bunch of rust on it. You know what? Let's uh, let's do the back first. Bit of a ways to go. I'm going to get nice and flat all the way across, and I'm not there yet. I'm actually not entirely convinced anybody has ever used this uh, plane before me. Although people's standards of sharp have changed over the years. I think uh, folks nowadays are a bit more particular about it, about the sharpness of their planes. Back in the 1920s, diamond plates weren't really uh, weren't really a thing, because diamonds were expensive, and the water stones they weren't even all that prevalent. It was uh, I think everybody was just pretty much still on the oil stones. And still not quite there. Oh, I wonder, maybe if I do start on the bevel, that'll get me there a little bit faster. This guy's moving a bit too much for my liking.
This is a bit more of a project than I anticipated, that's for certain. Starting to skew a little bit, I can see. That's not good. Put more pressure on the left side, that should straighten us out. Okay, I'm, I'm really getting sick of this. I need, uh... There, I've got a dog hole back there. And I am getting a burr all the way across the back, so that's a, that's a good sign. Though this grind is just not, uh, not going even, so it's disconcerting still. Should pay more attention to just keeping it straight. Go on to the medium stone. I do need to get a better holder for these plates as well. Maybe just break down and make one out of water at some point. Do have some oak on hand. That would do nicely, I believe.
Get in there. This is probably not the most entertaining thing I could be doing. I apologize for that, but I want to play with my toy. Because I've never had the app, I've never had a chance to cut dados with that before. And this seemed like a fine time to test it. All right. I'm going to call that. At least as far as the plates are concerned. Try this. I've heard you can uh, put your compound on bare wood or MDF or whatnot in order to polish the back of the blade. See how well that actually works in practice. Great. Oh well. It's not too important. This is a uh, shop furniture anyway. So on this one, we are going to need the knickers out. Which means I'm going to need a smaller screwdriver. Bear with me. Okay, that one's relatively sharp. You know, so much for this being a quick and dirty project. Getting all kinds of fancy. The 
45 plane and all. Of course, if I had used like a chisel and a router plane, we'd be done by now. <laughs> But no, no, I have to, I have to justify my purchases, don't I? So no, I bought this for a reason. Really, I did not just because I could. Fence off. I think this is probably one of the most shocking parts about this plane is the fact that the that the knickers are still intact. Oh no! Spoke too soon. That one's broken. Wonder if I can get replacements for these. I hope so. I think it'll still go in there. Broken in half. Come on, work with me. I am convinced that back when these things were popular, men had smaller fingers. Got too much protein in our diets. That might work. That remains to be seen. Okay, get it in the depth stop. I want to lock that down too tight because I got to move the sliding section still. Get that nice and flush, maybe just a little bit past flush. Advance the blade just a hair past the sole. And there we go. Depth stop, we don't need this to be too deep. Maybe about a quarter of an inch. Oh, that's not good. We are stuck on the knicker. I'm not sure how I will, I will overcome this. It's stuck on the screw head right there. I don't know if you could see that. That's as far as she will go. Well, I've got one on the other side. Maybe that will be enough. Set that to about a quarter inch and... So I know we all want to get this done. I've wasted a good amount of your time on this white whale here.
mallet. Good chance this won't even work. And won't that be embarrassing? Well, I guess that's how far it's going to go. I got the, uh, the depth stop in the way, so... Actually, let's just go ahead and... Bring that up, so that's not going to actually do anything for us. We'll get that about half an inch um, away from the end edge of the board. All right, now let's get a bench dog in here. Nope, that won't do it all. That will not do it all. Okay. Back here, and we'll use a hold fast. Make sure I got enough room. That should be fine. And we start with the backstroke. Make sure those knickers engage. Yep, this is, this is probably not going to work well at all. <laughs> Stay. Amazingly enough, that didn't work as well as it could have, but it worked a lot better than I expected. Second verse, same as the first? Probably not, but let's try it anyway. Loud noise, cover your ears. That makes a quick dado. I'll give it that. And it actually fits too, which is an added bonus. All right. Let's get back over here. And now we need some Before it gets away from me, before something breaks.
And these cuts are actually a little bit wider than I would have liked. But I think they will do. And I do believe so. Let's put a couple quick clamps on here. That one's coming apart. set that aside for now and that's the same width so I'll use that as a template for how much I want to cut off of this guy and this is a 45 degree cut um, for French cleats. So this will meet up nicely with the French cleats that I've got on the wall. And I'm just going to screw this onto the uh, onto the thing I just created there, and that should hold just fine. There's my square. Sorry, actually, I missed your comments. Um, well, thank you for the compliment on the bench. There's, there's things I like about it, things I don't. But it, uh, it, it definitely suits the needs. And yeah, the 45 is a really interesting tool. It's just not, um, it's not as useful as it would like to think, as it would like you to think. There are woodworkers who think it is uh, best applied as either a doorstop or a boat anchor. But considering that I got it for about, um, you know, a third of the price that I would get it on eBay, I jumped at the opportunity. Plus, at the time, I didn't have a rabbiting plane. And it does work as a rabbiting plane, it's just not really ideal. And I've got a little bit of uh, marks from the table saw. You know what, that, that'll still work, that'll still work. Is there still flush in between, and it's just a little bit of a group there. Alright, so, uh, this is going to work, is once I get these dry, I'm just going to hang it up there on the wall with the French cleats already in place and put a couple screws in it and that'll be my holder. Well, and it's been two hours. I'm getting hungry. It's lunch time for me. Um, I do appreciate y'all joining with me. Uh, X-Ray, special thanks to you for uh, chatting with me. Makes the workshop a little bit less lonely. Thank you for putting up with my 
exploration into the number 45 combination plane, which is entirely unnecessary, but still lots of fun for me. And hopefully, after a trip to the home desk spot, um, I will have appropriate materials to finish the uh, wire holding th thingies that I'm putting on there. And yeah, um, in about an hour, I've got scheduled a woodworking video. Um, it's going to premiere on Twitch. It's going to be this guy here, how to make a dovetail template, which is, uh, well, considering I've never had one before, I think it'll be a handy thing to have in the shop. Um, but yeah, that'll be about at two o'clock central time. Um, so an hour from now, roughly, and it'll be on YouTube tomorrow, uh, after that. Um, but yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Facebook, uh, subscribe to me on YouTube and oh yeah, I'm on Instagram too. All the social medias and the Twitters and the MySpaces. I'm not on MySpace, that was just a joke. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Later. No, really stop. I, I, I meant to push the